My Evonis Boris, what a wonderful winter's night it is to sit by the flame and try to keep warm and read a wonderful book such as this, The Complete Book of Terra, <laughs> by some of our favorite authors, Edgar Allan Poe uh, and, uh, oh, who else, H.P. Lovecraft, Rudyard Kipling, and just so many others that had such bone-chilling stories to, to, uh, to relay throughout the ages to us so that we can enjoy ourselves on this wonderful winter's night <laughs> and listen to all the sounds that the outside makes. Right, Boris? Ah, welcome, dear fiends. Welcome to yet another episode of Monster Movie Night. I am your creepy old curator and host of Monster Movie Night, Bobby Gamonster, <laughs> along with my co-host and pal, Boris T. Buzzard. We were just perusing a tome of forgotten lore. Uh, well, we call it forgotten lore, but everyone remembers all the names that I just uh, mentioned a moment ago, eh, Boris? <laughs> and indeed, I, I dare say that they'll be remembered hundreds and hundreds of years later. <laughs> but you know, on a wonderful winter's night, reading books and telling tales around the candles or a, a log fire or what have you is always one of the funnest things to do or one of the creepiest things to do indeed. <laughs> in fact, in tonight's feature film, you will find out that these uh, young people that went to a, a secluded cabin in the winter time and decided to, well, tell stories of their own and uh, perhaps become a story of their own. <laughs> Tonight's feature is called, make sure I get it right, exactly, it is called Screams of a Winter Night. And so, let us get ready to tune it in. Hmm? Let me get a little bit of uh, O negative here. Mm. Ah, excellent, excellent. Ah, it spilled a little, but that's okay. A little for the table, a little for the floor. <laughs> There's blood enough for us all. Anyway, let's type it into the old internet haunted keyboard. Greens of a Winter's Night, Matt Borrell, Mary Agent Cox. Excellent, excellent. Also, Gil Glasgow and Robin Bradley is uh, as well. Now, some of these names you may not remember right off the bat, but they're young people that decided, well, we're going to throw in our hats and become actors. Well... <laughs> Perhaps they became actors in the wrong film. <laughs> Let's go and tune it in to the old haunted TV. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'll come and get you. Let me out. Let me out. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. 
gone. It's back. John. Little John, step in. Yes, sir. Daddy. John Durand, you listen to me. Get out there. Turn them loose now. So then you hush now. Dorothy. This is first. Right at the barn. What do you mean? Up in the hill. Yeah, yeah, what do you say? No. No, you can't. You can't. You can't. Mom, you know get I'm going. Please. Head just stop it. Please. please. Don't go out. Please. Head up. John, how much farther anyway? Are you sure we're on the right road? Are we? Oh, how many miles? John, 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 come on. How much farther? We're just about an hour and a half away oh, now. My butt can't take yeah. two more hours. Two <laughs> 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 hours? Like you guys like wanted hours. to get away, didn't you? Yeah, but we yeah. wanted to get back, to too. Yeah, really? <laughs> Look, we're nearly there. <laughs> it doesn't look like we're anywhere. <laughs> We're almost there. Yes, we've got about two hours to go, John. Hey, Cal, I've got a year up later. I might, might as well know. So what's new? Yeah. Here's the station coming up. Last stop. Great, I need to get... John, where's the heat? Who needs something? i got to go in. You guys need to get some water. The can's back there. This heat will work? Yeah, yeah, it works. God. Creepo. <laughs> Who's going in with me? Oh, nice place. Come on, girls. Follow me. Somebody want to fill the water can? Hey, Steve? Can you believe those guys? Hey, I'll go on. Oh, hey, Steve, you go. Go on. Look, somebody's... Look. Go! Okay, you go first. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, fill it with uh, premium, please. Nice van. Thanks. Fill her up, huh? Yes, with uh, premium, please. No problem. Say, where are you guys headed for, anyway? Lake Durand. Lake Durand? You're kidding. Nobody goes up there this time of year. I wonder if this place has any. Let's get some gum. Sounds like a good one. Harper, what kind of beer you drink? Lots of it. Get a lot.
Harper. Come on, you guys. Hey, come on, you guys. Hurry up. All set. Anything else? No, how much? Eight bucks. Everybody in? All set. Yeah, come on, let's get out of here. Come on, come on. He was just a big guy. Check the oil? No. no. Christ, it's going to be dark before we get there. Say, uh, I guess you guys uh, haven't heard about all the weird stuff that's happening yes, up there. Yes, uh, we way. have. Thanks. Nobody comes up here much anymore, especially in the winter. The wind blows a lot. It used to be called Coyote Lake, in fact. The Indians named it because of the weird noises the wind makes up here. Pretty interesting, huh? It's kind of spooky sometimes. There are some great stories. Anyway, now they call it Lake Duran. Uh, which is pretty weird, too. Wow. Mr. Fitt? Mm, sure. How long since anybody's been here, John? Listen, it's been a few years, I guess. We used to come here every summer. Looks like quite a place. Looks Spooky. Watch it. How many bedrooms? Well, sort of spooky. It is kind of creepy looking. Listen, it's a lot nicer than it looks. How many bedrooms? Hey, Cal, wait a minute, will you? Where did we go? Right there. We'll have to go into the back. Look at this. You guys are going to love it. Solid as a rock. Come on, John. No problem. Hey, Harper, where are you going? Around the front. There's nothing around there. Harper! Where the hell is Alan A. Lane? Harper! Found it. Well, nobody stole the damn thing. God. Look at this place. Just look at it. And we're stuck here for the whole weekend. I can't believe it. Blaine. You drug me into this, remember? Alan! I won't forget it. I promise you. Can you bring some pliers? They're up in the front. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I'm sorry, Elaine.
trying to get in a window. This place is built like a fort. I think I've got it, Sal, but... Jeff, yeah. Kill. <clears throat> Maybe it's jam. <laughs> <laughs> John. Great. Now <laughs> Where the hell is Harper? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> nice place, John. <laughs> everybody to work. Uh, you want to come with us? What about Steve? Nah, come on. Why, come on! We gotta do something with this place. Okay. You two go on. Where are you going? We're the firewood detail. Well, that's more like it. Let's get going. John? John! <laughs> Beautiful spot, huh? But we ought to have some fun out here anyway. Okay, okay. Water detail. <laughs> Trust her with him? Do you want to hear about this or not? What about the wood? There's some good stuff where we're going. Ah, uh, unspoiled wilderness, huh? I guess. It's getting cold. Something's funny about this place. You, uh, don't find this romantic? You, me, the lake, two buckets. Okay, Juki. Don't get the place cleaned up. We'll have a fire. Come on. Some said they heard screams, howling, terrible noises. 
wind blew like crazy. This place was a wreck. Part of the bodies were scattered all over the farmyard. They found the old man over by the barn. His head was ripped right off. Never did find it. They found one of the boys over near the edge of the woods. His body had been pulled apart like a wishbone. Man, it was Okay, all... John, I get it, all right? Where are we? Uh, not far. Listen, they called it a natural disaster. They decided that a gas pocket underneath the cabin ruptured, ignited by the fireplaces. <laughs> so much for the Duran. How about a tornado? Nah. And there was one other detail that was unaccounted for. The midnight howling, it kept up. Now, John, scared the hell out of everybody. Maybe we better get back, John. No, no, listen. Uh, it's not too much further. And you haven't heard the best part yet. Come on. So while all this was happening, the story got around. Supposedly, it came from this old Indian living back up in the hills here. An old Indian. And according to this Indian, everything that had happened was the work of a spirit. Uh, this thing called Shataba. A very evil, very powerful spirit. legend was that it only came to life in the winter. It had been around forever, but this was its territory, and always would be. It chased the Indians' tribe off a long time ago, and it ran off the farmers, too. It was the spirit of the wind. That's what Chitaba means, coyote wind. Come on. There it is. That's the Duran place. And that's the Duran. Pretty interesting, huh? Why did you bring me up here? So you could see it. Okay, let's go. You're not even gonna look at it? I've seen it. Come on, Cal. Look, John, I know what you're doing. Hey. This is your big one, right? Listen. And now I'm supposed to be in on it, right? Right? Well, not exactly. Forget it. Come on, Cal. Somebody had to see it or it wouldn't work. We better go find the... Oh, they'll be all right. The Cal? Oh! What's wrong with you? Hey! Hey, oh, don't. Let go. You didn't mean to do that, did you? Hey, come on. Why are you doing this? How soon they forget. See, I told you.
भैया Better get some firewood, huh? Lake is incredible this time of year. I bet we could really catch some fish out there. You got riding wheels here? Come on, come on. I didn't know you were coming this far. Don't waste any time, do you? Here's to the weekend. <laughs> there you go. And to get away from school. And John's camp. Yeah, that's right. John's camp. Even if it is a little creepy. <laughs> a little creepy? Oh, come on. It's creepy, but it's cozy. I guess so. All right, all right. It has character. Creepy character. No, really. Now, what's creepy about it? Everything's creepy about it. Well, it's ours anyway. Well, there you go. It's nice, John. It really is. Well, it's safe, that's for sure. Safe? And it's warm. Yeah, unless you want to get out in a hurry. Say <laughs> from what? Relax. Harper. Hey, Steve. Oh, Harper. I swear, Cole, if you start. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Come on, Juki. You're sorry. You're always sorry. No, look, I didn't do anything. That's right. I mean, most of the time, that's it. We scare ourselves. Yeah, sure. Now, wait a minute. I'll let somebody else scare you. Are we starting in on this? The movies are the worst. Or television. Did anybody see the one about the guy with the sack on his head? He's going around town. Yeah, the news is the worst. Mm -hmm. That creep up in New York or in L.A., that strangler business. That stuff happens everywhere. That's right. But it's crazy in those cities. That's what I said. Well, every once in a while, somebody goes crazy in Podunk. The guy with the sack on his head, just like that. Yeah, you hear all kinds of stories. If you listen. <laughs> that's right. And most of the time, that's it. Stories. No, no, what do you mean, stories? Just that. Weird tales. Well, some of that weird stuff happens. Oh, John. Well, it does. This isn't his case, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, people are always scared of stuff that they don't understand. Heavy. So we make up stories, right? based on some pretty creepy stuff. Everything's creepy to you, John. <laughs> well, then on the other hand, they're not always just stories. Here we go. Come on now, John. No, 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 no. Listen, have any of you ever heard of the Moss Point Man? The what? The Moss Point Man. Well, I've heard of that. John. That's right. And I know for a fact that it's true. Is this one of those Bigfoot things? No. It happened near here? Uh, yeah, yeah, it happened down south, wasn't it? Yes, uh, near the Gulf. It was in the paper for, for weeks. Uh, lots of cops and all like that. Yeah. Had everybody pretty freaked out. What happened? 
You mean you guys don't know about it? Well, let's hear it. Steve? You really want to hear about it? We're gonna no. hear it. Go on, John. Tell them. You sure now? Oh, wait a minute. I gotta get into the beer. This is a really strange deal. Harper. Just goes to show you that some things happen that you can't even imagine. Weird things. Things that come right out of the blue. You never know when these things will happen, and you never know where. Now, this particular thing happened a couple of years ago. There was this big party, uh, end of school, whatever, some big celebration. And these two kids wanted to leave to be, uh, well, well, you know, alone. So they decided they'd take a drive out to the sticks and find a place to park. Now, the guy, Roger something, I can't remember his last name, had a great plan. But he made one small miscalculation. He ran out of gas. <laughs> you know, for real. Ordinarily, it wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but this guy, Roger, had also gotten them lost. They were miles away from any place. didn't have any idea where they were. And plus, Roger was a little drunk, and the girl had a curfew at midnight, so she was hacked off, right? We're out of gas. How could you do this? Uh... I, w I didn't plan it. What are we going to do? I'm supposed to be home by 12 o'clock. Look, I'll get you home. Look, I'll just go... I'll get... I've got a can in the trunk. I'll, I'll get it. I'll, I'll, I'll get some gas. Where are you going to go, Roger? Well, I don't know where I'm going to go, but I'm going to find a place. If there's a place to be found, I'll find it. What am I supposed to do? Stay You're going to stay here and wait, right? Oh, wonderful. It wasn't exactly your perfect evening, and it didn't get any better. He figured that she'd give in before she'd stay there by herself, and... She probably never thought that he'd leave her there alone. Well, just, uh, stay put. I'll be right back. Well, what else can I do, huh? Roger! What do you want? Miracles?
National Park crew find the car the next morning. And they found the girl, too. She was tied to a tree near the road. The amazing thing was that, besides a few bruises, she was okay. Physically okay, anyway. There was one very weird thing. Bite marks on her legs. Human, you know. Well, in the papers, they said the coroner said that it was um, juvenile. Tiny teeth marks. You're kidding. And on top of the car, small, muddy footprints. No bigger than a child. But what about the girl? Yeah. She was all right. Well, she got all right. She got a little, uh... <laughs> but she stuck to her story. The whole time, she claimed her attacker had been a... Well, what? Well, come on, John. A little person. A little person. <laughs> a little person. A little person. Now, she's probably in shock, John. I mean, you couldn't blame her. But, Calvin, how do well, you... Well, anyway, it sure does give you the creeps. Can you imagine? I wouldn't have stayed there. <sighs> Creepy is right. John gives me the creeps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that stuff does happen. And not believing it doesn't make it stop happening. What about the hook? I've heard of that now. Me too, I think. The hook? That's a hook. The hook hangs around a lake or a lover's lane. Sneaks up on kids in parked cars and slices them to pieces with his bloody hook. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> One time, this guy was telling me that up in Arkansas, where he's from, this story about this old guy that was... Okay. Judy, please meet the lady. Anyway, this story got spread around that a maniac was stalking the woods where everybody went parking, right? That got blown all out of proportion. There was absolutely nothing to it. But it just so happened there was an old guy living out there alone in a shack, an old bum, and he got wind of it somehow. Now, obviously, he was a little strange to begin with. I mean, living out there alone and all. Anyway, he became the maniac. I'm kidding. Hey, me. Hey, well, he never hurt anybody or anything. You know, he was a harmless old guy. But he prowled the woods at night, rattling chains, and jumping on parked cars. <laughs> Scared the hell out of everybody. <laughs> really? Power of suggestion. Yeah, sort of. Wait a minute. Sure, that makes sense. You can build things up to a point where they really get crazy. The Moss Point man was. Okay, John, okay. What he's trying to say is that people get ideas from things like TV. I mean, there are things like that, but... <sighs> Never mind. Oh, I won't let him get you. Steve, you see what don't. you're doing, John? What are you doing now, John? Yeah, what are we doing? Oh, I told a lousy story, that's all. No, you were right. Would you believe they're arguing about spooks now? <laughs> Steve and Sally are at it again. Watch it, Alan. Oh, come on, you guys. Personally, I don't know what she sees in that screen. Well, anyway... I, I think I'll go to the powder room. Sally? Sure. You got a hell of a big mouth. Uh, would anybody else like another beer? Yeah, me. You want anything, Lori? Anybody? I think I'll have a beer. Alan, would you? Now, Steve, you know I was just kidding. But all this talk about ghosts and goblins drives me crazy. It's just plain silly. We're just having fun, Elaine. That's all. There are a lot of other things to talk about, aren't there? We talk all the time, for God's sakes, and never about that kind of garbage. What's the use? Uh, Elaine, just knock it off, honey. Nobody wants to hear that crap. Is
isn't Harper sweet? Such a nice boy. What, John? I just want to ask you something. Are you drunk or what? No, no, listen. Uh, what do you think about Liz? Liz? She's cute. Yeah? She's lovable? Be serious. Why? Well, uh, uh, I kind of like her. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, take my advice then, John. What? Don't tell her about the Duran. Oh, Cal. Uh, <laughs> listen, wait a minute. Uh, you you want to see something? Like what? Uh, come here. Uh, come here for a second. Let's see. It's right along here. Something like... Ah, there it is. Read that. You're kidding. I told you. Look at that picture. John, this happened in the 40s, 1948. Yeah, I know. They lost a lot of equipment, and some pretty weird stuff happened to the crew, too. Uh, read that. Worst I've seen in 20 years working timber. Nobody can tell me a guy did that to himself with a saw. No way I'd go back in there. Now, John, look at that truck. Wow. Now, John, wait a minute. What does Chitaba have to do with all this? Uh, what, what's happening? Uh, uh, there, look. No. It says here that none of the accidents were out of proportion, that they were unusual. Uh, a company line. That was the company spokesman there. Die hard. Well, they pulled out, didn't they? John, you know what I think? Oh, come on. Get... <clears throat> what's that? <clears throat> in here? Nothing. Uh, dirty pictures. You can't look. Cal! Look, we'll be right in, okay? All right, but hurry up. Everybody's already talking about you two guys. <laughs> well, it is pretty weird, John. I'll say that much. Well, that's about it. Uh, just between the two of us. You sure? Sure. Wild men and all that stuff is one thing. This is weirdness. So that's it, huh? Well, there's another one along here someplace. You're kidding. It's a disappearance thing. This family went out camping in 1959. Completely vanished. <laughs> Just like that. John. Pretty weird, huh? There they are. I told them about the dirty pictures. What were you doing? John was giving me a tour down memory lane. Well, come on. Steve's about to tell another story. Oh, what story? The green light, whatever that is. Oh, boy. Perfect. I told him about my brother's school, wh where he went to college. Cal, my brother was a good friend of a guy who this happened to. You haven't heard it. I don't think so. Well, this fraternity over there was pledging, you know? And then these three guys, one of their brothers had been in before or something. Anyway, they couldn't get to him, you know? They knew all the tricks. So, they set it up for these guys to spend the night in an old abandoned hotel outside of town that was supposed to be haunted. Well, it met all the requirements, that's for sure. It had been a real snazz place at one time, back in the big railroad days, but it had been shut down for years, and it got pretty run down and very creepy. <laughs> what a wonderful film so far, eh, Boris? You know, hearing the sounds of the winter's night to screams and the chills and the thrills. It made me think about, oh, my childhood, listening to such wonderful music as, as this particular record. It's called Screams. Oh, let's put get it up here where you can actually see. It's called Blood Curdling Terror and uh, Horror Sounds. To make you shiver. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So let us put it on the old uh, record player. Isn't that a beautiful record there with a skull on it? <laughs> and we'll set it here. Whoops, maybe. It's been a while since I've learned, uh, knew how to uh, deal with one of these. 
<laughs> there we go. Maybe I should have practiced just a little bit more. <laughs> it's been a long time. So let us get started here. And uh, yes, we'll put it on and listen. Ah, listen to the sounds of the shivers and the horror and the screams. Ho oh, ho ho. Excellent, excellent. Ah, listen to that, boys. Mm. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Let's, whoop, there we go. Let's take that off for a bit. It's so heartening to see that the old uh, LPs or the uh, vinyl are, is coming back into uh, into fad or into vogue, as it were, to listen to some of the old uh, records that I had as a kid. This one, as well as Disney's sounds, uh, uh, chills and thrills, and uh, there was, of course, you know, the Edgar Allan Poe, uh, one Poe on pipes that I've got back there, and Elvira sings, and so many other. LPs and vinyl that I had many, many years ago. <laughs> so, my dear friends, I thought I'd bring you a little bit of yesteryear then to soothe your soul for the night's screams in the winter's... <laughs> in the winter night. Hmm? So, let us go back to our film tonight, eh, Boris? <laughs> Maybe I'll we'll rev this up a little bit later and... Here's some more chills and thrills. <laughs> All kinds of weird stories and ghost tales and stuff have been told about the place over the years, but nobody really knew anything about it. One very strange thing. The word was that every so often somebody would spot a real dim light moving around on the upper floors, moving back and forth. And they said, Nobody had ever been past the first floor. So it was a perfect place, see, for hassling these particular pledges, kind of straighten them out. Now, they knew what the deal was, so naturally they were just a little bit nervous about it. But they weren't going to let it get to them. simple. All they could take in were their sleeping rolls and one flashlight between them. They had to stay inside the hotel till a car came for them at daybreak. And they were told not to go beyond the first floor, no matter what. Hey! This ought to be all right. You did bring those matches and candles, huh? Yep. Got him right here in my gym sock. What? just supposed to have the flashlight. We're only supposed to have the light. Look, knuckle brain. 
Listen, Billy, anything goes here. If they stay outside like they're supposed to, they won't see it, right? God, you guys just calm down. Just settle back and relax. It's gonna be a long night. <clears throat> Still, I, I don't know about that. Uh... One cruddy little candle? Still, all this. Still, look, just figure we're beating the system, okay? We should have brought some beer. Now, there you go. Or girls. Yeah, this would be a great place to bring girls. Did I ever tell you about Denise Reynolds? What about her? What about her? I took her out. You're kidding. Well, we didn't go to the prom or anything. John Ray set me up with a bug night at the drive-in. <laughs> yeah. This big car drives up in the parking lot, and four or five guys in suits get out, right? So we tried to turn all the lights in the house out, but no. We heard him coming up the front. Man, there were people scattering everywhere. There was a stack of beer cans this high. Well, anyway, there was money scattered all over the place, and people were jumping out windows. Man, somebody even left their shoes. Wow. But but nobody got caught. Nobody. Oh, God. You guys gonna talk all night or what? Oh. What's the time, anyway? It's, uh, almost 2.30. Oh, Christ. Four more hours. Well, the hard part's over with, Parker. Sure, sure. You, uh, you really think so, Ron? Listen. Let me tell you a little bit about this deal, in case you... Scumbags. You've been talking instead of listening. No, this is the first sound, I swear. We've been watching the door, too, and it never made a sound. If anything, it must have... That's it for me. You think, you think that's them? No! Shut up, damn it. Take it easy, Billy. Uh... What if it's not them? People have seen stuff, lights, stuff moving around. Wait a minute. We're working ourselves up the into something. I'm going to work my fist into his face if he doesn't knock it off. It could be an animal. Sometimes they get into these old places. Well, it's them. You know it is. Damn! Say, Parker, why don't you just go upstairs and check it out? It's not a bad idea, boy. What? Come on, Parker. No. No, think about it. They wouldn't expect it, see? We'll turn the whole thing around on those jerks. Listen, you can't go prowling around in an old place like this at night. The place is falling apart. If they want to scare us, let them come down here. If it's them. Well, I'm staying here. You both stay here. But I'm not going to sit here on my tail waiting to get jumped. Lord, that's got to be them. Well, look, uh, take the flashlight at least, huh? No! I got it, bozo. Now, look, both of you guys just sit still. If I see anything, I'll holler. Rats! Parker! Oh, let him go. It's probably them. Besides, he's a big boy now. He's an idiot.
I'm cold. Have you heard anything? Nothing. It's been gone over an hour now. Look, uh, I'm leaving. I mean, I'm... Well, this is ridiculous, Ron. I mean, look, they can take this stupid fraternity. Wait a minute. That's it. That's what? We haven't heard anything. So? So. If those guys had grabbed them, we'd heard something. If anything would have grabbed them, we'd have heard something. Well, I don't care what's going on. I'm leaving. <laughs> no. Don't you get it? It is them. And now Parker's in on it. And now they think they really have got us. Uh-uh. No, listen, it's a test, right? It's a test to see if we have the guts enough to go up those stairs. Run. Don't go past the first floor. I don't know. God, what a couple of dummies. They must be laughing their heads off up there. I don't hear it. Oh, come on, mate. Look, we'll go up together. Look, if we back out now, we'll never live it down. I don't like it, Ron. Oh, come on. Don't blow it now, after all we've been through. Look, next year, we'll be the guys up there. Just think of the parties. The girls. Yeah. Do it for the sweet young things of Sigma, Sigma, Sigma. All right? Must be crazy. Okay. Great. But together, right? Look, this way we'll never leave each other's sight. I wish we'd have brought the lights. Look, I'll go to the top of the stairs, and then when I get there, I'll signal you, and you come up. They can't get us from behind. It's not that far. Look, see? I'm counting on you now. Forget it. What are we doing here, Ron? Look, there's one more floor left. I know they must be up there. Look, wait here.
Guys from the fraternity figured they'd be waiting at the door when they came to get them. They weren't. They found their sleeping bags. They combed the whole house from top to bottom. They called everywhere. 
no luck. Then, finally they found the door and the secret staircase, and they found the two guys in the upper room. They were all scratched up, bleeding, exhausted, circling around under an empty light socket, dangling from a tattered old cord, hopelessly insane. One of the guys never uttered a word for the rest of his life. They did get snatches of the story from the other one. to the first guy, Parker. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Wasn't that great? Did you see Juki's face? <laughs> Come on, Juki. Oh, it was really John's idea, man. He got us to the door one night. <laughs> he did fine, just great. Come on, Juki. It wasn't all that bad. It was just a joke. Listen. It could have happened to anybody, Juki. He got a bunch of us in the dorm with it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't be such a twit. It's perfect, don't you see? Somebody always falls for it and goes, Stop it! I don't know what you're getting so freaked out about, Juki. John, just... Just lay off, okay? Harper. He's right, John. Okay, John. Okay, okay, well, excuse me. Jeez. Well, I don't see what the big deal is either. You wouldn't. What? Never mind. Oh, I get it. It's my fault now, huh? Oh, no, not you. You know, Steve, sometimes I wish. What? Mari. Well, what? Steve. Oh, what the hell? Hey, come on, everybody. Let's don't spoil everything. Steve! Spooky Jukey. Elaine. And sweet, sweet Sally. Everybody's very best friend. Elaine. Little Miss Popularity. Have you ever wondered why you're not? Good grief! What's with everybody anyway? It's my fault. No, it isn't. Oh, Jukey. Well, I can't help it. I just don't like being scared, that's all. I don't mean to spoil everything. You're not, Juki. Harper, why don't you get her a Coke, okay? She could do a glass without any hair on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we go outside. What are you guys doing? What are you guys up to in here? We're not up to anything. Just talking. Hey, uh, what's going on in there? Not much. Uh, John, you better go easy. Oh, sure, sure. I will. Take it easy, Sally. Oh, shut up. Alan. Oh, I bet Alan has a good one. Uh, how about a story, Alan? What about you, Cal? Oh, great. John, what's happening? The lamps are getting low, that's all. That's all, John. Don't worry. Now, come on. What about a story? What about the lamp? We've got other lamps. Yeah, the rest are fine. There's plenty of light. Oh, boy. One lamp flickers a little and everybody... See? Now, let's have a story. But you're the storyteller, John. Hey, I've got one. I have another one, but I'm, uh... I'm kind of saving it. That's a good idea, John. I know one. What? Nothing. Oh, come on. Laurie's got one. Let's hear it, Laurie. No. Laurie, 
Do you really? That'd be great. Let her tell it. Come on. Sure. Laura, you don't have to. What's it about? What difference does it make? I can't believe you guys. Give her a chance. That's right. Well, go on, Lori. Okay. Well... The little town I'm from is very old. It's one of the oldest towns in the whole country. Full of history, you know. Legends. Anyway, in the town there's an old Catholic cemetery where most of the people from back then are buried. Except for one. Lorraine. She was an old outcast, lived alone in the woods near the town. Horrible looking, old. The Indians around there practically worshipped her. Not the townspeople, though. Most of them thought she was crazy. They say she was a witch, and that they'd have burned her alive if it hadn't been for the priests. And when she died, townspeople were able to force the priest to bury her outside the cemetery. I've heard all sorts of stories since I was a little girl about what happened then. Whatever. Something did happen, and it made those people believe that Lorraine's spirit was haunting the graveyard. Lorraine meant to have her place in the cemetery. That's what they said. She would unless she was stopped. Of course, it happened a long time ago. The people in town still tell the story. And just a few years ago, some kids from our high school were doing this project, digging for old artifacts near the cemetery or something. What they dug up was an old, unmarked grave. Empty. There was nothing in it. It caused quite a stir. The whole town was buzzing about it. Then it started to happen. People started hearing noises again in the graveyard. Seeing things. And then one night, the cemetery was ransacked. Stones knocked over. Old tombs opened. It was awful. Vandals, they said. Kids playing sick jokes. That's what some people said. Other people said it was Lorraine. I don't know. Maybe there's nothing to it. What do you think? They said they saw something. Yeah, you know how girls are. Julie's not. She doesn't get bent out of shape over nothing. She doesn't see things. Okay. But we've been wandering around this place for an hour. It's really starting to give me the creeps, you know? Be home. No, come on. Let's 
go take a look. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're crazy. Maybe it's a trick. Oh, yeah? Well, that's a good one. Don't believe it. We gotta get out of here. Split up. I'll head for the west gate. Okay.
people heard the noise and came. But it was too late. Too late. He just had to go in there. Didn't prove a thing, you know. Nobody knows just exactly what. Somebody even said they were the ones. It's just so stupid. Pretty good story. You think it's true? Listen to the wind. Lamps are really getting kind of low. I know where we can get some more. There's a place not far from here. John. No, no, really. They're not open, uh, but they live right there, and I know them. It's not all that far. They are nearly empty, Cal. You sure there's no more, John? Well, yeah. I checked. I don't know. Look, I'm not up to anything. Uh, go with me if you want no. to. No. Well, I'm not going to go alone. Going where? Never mind. I'm going to get fuel for the lamps. Oh, I'll go. Oh, uh, where? They're going to get fuel. Oh, sure, I'll go. Where? What's going on? Uh, lamp fuel. There's some store down the road. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. God, let's all go, why don't we? Look, we can't all go. Steve? Steve and I'll go. Let's do. No, look, it's not all that far, and it won't take that long. Let's all go. Let's leave. Look, we're just going to make a run to the store, okay, Juki? We, we can't leave now. For goodness sakes, Juki, and spoil all this fun? What in the world is wrong with you? It's okay, Juki. It's all right. Look, we're just going to buy some lamp oil and some batteries for the radio, okay? Look, we're completely out. Yes, I checked. Now, does anybody need anything else? Money. Money. Oh, yes, I forgot. Money. Money. I spent oh, all money. mine on gas. I suppose that means me, here. huh? You guys are just gonna have to pass oh, the hat. Oh, do you know? Well, gosh! Sorry. Oh, nice. Real nice. Hey, thanks, fellas. I'll get the coats. Thanks, Alan. Be careful. Uh, we will. And if there's any beer, John, you want to get some, please? Okay. We'll have some food ready. Something's just wrong. It's this place. Damn place. And John. I don't know. I almost wish we hadn't come.
this. Did you find it? There's not any. Anyway, you just have to know what they want. For the most part, they're desperate, or they wouldn't be teaching, right? <laughs> Get Harbor to do it. Oh, and bring the pickles. I guess she's just lucky. Oh, I don't know. Well, I do, really. I mean, why does he stay with her? They're both rich as a coot. No. I just don't get it. Now, Cal and Laurie, that's nice. Mm-hmm. And you are, too. No, really. And you end up with Steve. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I know. You don't know about him. Not really. I mean, Sally? <laughs> guys so long. That's pretty good, huh, Hopper? <laughs> Boy, you should have seen him. It's cold out there, you know. Oh, the wind's really blowing like crazy. Hey, uh, hey, look at this. What's the matter? Uh, what's wrong with everybody? Listen, you scared the hell out of them, John. Yeah, us too. Where's the van, John? Uh, up the road. Uh, we drove it up the road and, and ran back. Uh, but listen... Great. Man. Just great. How could you do that, John? Well, we just wanted to liven things up a little. It was a joke, that's all. A joke? Why? Wind's uh, really blowing like crazy out there. Well, it, it nearly knocked us down. I think everybody's letting their imagination run away with things. Let's just forget. Blaine. Yeah. Listen, Let's just Blaine. forget. Uh -huh. That's that is really, real easy for you to talk. Well, it's true. Well, it is. I mean, here you are getting all worked up over some crazy stories about <laughs> maniacs and curses and spooks in cemeteries and wolf men, or whatever that thing was supposed to be in the window. If you had been well, there, you would have been the same way you were there. No, wait a minute. Let her really talk. for you, sweetheart. I mean, think about it. What are the odds of running into anything like that? Uh, the odds don't matter. What I'm saying, John, is that it's all a bunch of nonsense. Like flying saucers. Well, now, hold on. People have seen those. No. Well, they have. There have been dozens of them. People think they've seen them. See? Well, what about all the pictures people have of them? Fakes, obviously. Nah. Look, what I'm getting at is this dummy. The really creepy things that happen aren't supernatural. They're human. Very human. Yeah, like John, right? 
No. No, not really. Usually, there's somebody you would never expect, actually. Somebody mousy. Like our little Juki there. I don't think anybody wants to hear about it, Elaine. Or sweet, like Sally. I want to hear about it. Me too. Let's don't. They're the people we never think would be capable of those horrible things they do. I'm not listening to this. Clam up, will you? Shh. They go through their whole lives feeling ignored, unappreciated, belittled, used. One day, they're pushed too far, and something just snaps up there. They go berserk. They do incredible things. Everybody's caught off guard, shocked, horrified, amazed, stunned. That little guy in English? You mean the girl right down the hall? You're kidding. I don't believe it. It couldn't be them. Weird. That's what's really scary. I went to school with a girl once. I didn't really know her. She was a sweet little thing, apparently. Not overly pretty. Very nice. You know, wouldn't hurt a bug. She didn't even date until we were seniors. No one even noticed her. She wasn't in any of the clubs or anything. Then a friend of mine decided to feel sorry for the poor thing. Badgered her boyfriend into lining up somebody to ask her out. So he did. But he picked the wrong friend. After the briefest of preliminaries, this friend took her straight to our local lover's lane, up on a bluff near town overlooking the river. Very romantic. Since he gallantly offered to take the poor thing out, this creep decided she should show a little gratitude. I'll hold on to you. I better not. Oh, come on now, you'll love it. Well? Tell me, is this your very first date? <laughs> Hey, hey, where are you going? Hey, wait a minute. Look, look, I didn't mean it. Hey, hey, come on, girly. Wait for me. No wonder you don't get any dates. Look, don't be such a turkey. I want to go back. Try and relax. Here. No. Come on, give me a chance. Come here, I'm not gonna hurt you.
Some people picked her up out on the highway. She told them an hysterical story about some maniac who had attacked them out on the bluff. He came upon them suddenly out of nowhere. Somehow she had gotten away. The papers ate it up. They never found the maniac, of course. He continued to terrorize kids out on the bluff. Everyone was sympathetic for a while. But she got very strange, completely withdrew. They all took to calling her crazy and drove her right up the wall. When she graduated, her parents shipped her off to college in another state so she could get away from all that, forget the awful past, make new friends. She didn't make any, and she avoided men like the plague. Crazy Annie. Take it easy. Come on, baby. Give me a chance. That's it, yeah. That's it. <laughs>
Why? Why? I don't understand. Isn't that mine? Isn't it? You mean you did this because I borrowed your shawl? Borrow? You didn't borrow. You didn't ask. You took it. Where did you wear it? What? What have you been doing? You took it to the lake, didn't you? Oh, for God's sake. Is that... Don't think I don't know about that. What goes on down there? You're kidding. Look at this. In my shawl. Well, wear it for good luck. Who knows? You are nothing but trash. Trash? Because I date? Because I get asked out by boys? Because of what you do. Now, look. I have had it with you, you little twit. In the first place, you don't know anything. And in the second place, what I do is my business. So butt out. But don't you see that... Oh, shut up! You're not even sorry, are you? You are crazy, you know it. There's something wrong with you. You're not sorry at all. Just leave me alone, I mean it. You will be. You will be sorry. You're going to be real sorry. You are crazy as a damn jaybird! It's you. Look, I I'm glad you came back. I'm sorry. I, sh I shouldn't have taken it. I'm sorry. I really am. Sweet little girl next door. It could be anybody. That's the scary part. It could happen anywhere.
Crazy Annie. Weird John. Weird John. Warpo Harpo. Spooky Jooky. Spooky Jooky. <laughs> Spooky Jooky. <laughs> It'll be morning soon. There's no reason to stay. Buddy, just take it easy. John, please, can't we? Cal. Just a story. What story? Nothing. What are you talking about? Nothing. It's just some crazy deal. One of John's stories. Does the, the trees. It, it's always like that. It's that thing. It's that thing. He knows. It's just the wind. I want to know. What, what is going on? Will somebody please? Legend. 
the wind. I don't know. It's just a story, for God's sakes, I swear! Just a story. You think those stories get started? We have to get out. Wait a minute. We have to leave now. All of us. It's our only chance. The hills. You're crazy. I'm not going out in that. Stop it. Now wait a minute. There's no time. Cal. John, for God's sake, tell them. Listen, please, just leave.
Ah, delicious, Boris, delicious. You make the best gastinis, and especially in a mug with my likeness and name on it. <laughs> I want to thank you for that present, dear Boris. Ah, my dear fiends, did you survive tonight's teratome? <laughs> imagine, imagine all those things come into life. Was it the cabin that made the stories come true, or was it the stories that made the cabin come true? Hmm, come to life. <laughs> and I wonder about those four that got away, or did they get away? It sounded like to me there was a creature in the forest, didn't it, to you, Boris? <laughs> we can only hope. Well, my dear fiends, we hope that you have enjoyed tonight's feature thrill fest, and I hope that you are faring up very well in this winter, uh, whether it be howling the winds, or whether it be snowing, or even sunshine. Uh, we have to take the bad with the good. <laughs> well, until next time, my dear fiends, as always, keep screaming.